me back again mm -hmm. so this video today is about the people them who are in their 30s still living at home with mom and dad don't know if it was the last live stream or the live stream before that kind of done a live stream before look a while but i don't know if it was the last one or the one before that i was talking about people them who are in their 30s are still living at home and it's kind of like the norm now you know whereas like 20 30 years ago People them who were 16, 17 years old were out on their own. Literally, my mom's generation, my mom's all 51 and that. People them who are my mom's generation and that, they will know like it was normal to be out of your mom's yard at 17, 18 years old and that. Literally, me and my mom sat down and we was talking about all the people them on my road that's my age. Like it was, a, it was weird growing up on my well, it was good, but it's quite strange that there's so many young people. Or was so many young people my age who are actually the same age as man. So, for example, like, literally, there's, like, probably eight households that have youths that were the same age as man, just on my road alone. Maybe more, like, let's say 10 households that had a youth that was the same age as man on my road and on my state, like, other roads and that. There was bare of us who were all the same age, plus or minus a year or two. And I was saying to my mum, like, ah, oh, you get me? I ain't gonna say no numbers or any names and that, but yeah, my man there, he's 30, he's still living at home. Then that girl there, she's 30, she's still living at home. Literally, like I could me and my mom were going through it, like oh boom, across the road, boom, they're still she's still living at home, boom, boom, boom. There's so many people that's my age still living at home. And the ones then that have moved out, the only reason why they moved out is because the girls had a youth. Like there's so many people on my road, on my state, still living at home and we're all in our thirties, and obviously I moved out because I got my own place. And, but the rest of them, most of them are still living at home. And like, I met man who they are only like I think like 41, 42 years old, and they were young enough to still live with their parents who live opposite my mom, like a couple of doors to the side of the building, but basically opposite my mom's yard. And, like, and I said to a man like, "Raw." Like, I know you're not that much older than me. How comes I've never seen you live at your parents, you Like, they lived there for 20 years and that is, ah, me and, my, me and my sister, we were out from 16, 17 years old. And that's just how it was back in the day, innit? Like, people them who's my mum's age and that, they were out from 16, 17. None of this still living at home as a 30-year-old. Like, you were, you would have been mocked. If you were still living at home as a 25-year-old back in the day, there were people that laughed at you, let alone 30. 35, 40 years old. There's man who's all 50 years old still living at their mum's yard. Anyway, on to the video. Done a lot of talking. If you're a renter, you may have noticed that right now it feels harder than ever to find a home. Ruined my entire year, if not my entire life. Bidding wars, damp, mould, personality contests. Like the X Factor. Evictions for no reason and skyrocketing rent. Entirely unfair and completely unmanageable. Basically like the Wild West. So what's going on in the UK right now? And is it really the worst time ever to be a renter? This is, um quite something. This is Ang Harrod. She recently moved into this house in South London. You're washing your hair. The moldy water will just start dropping on your head. I'm 27. I've got a good job. I'm looking for something a bit less uni house. I was going through a breakup and had to get out of the house uh, ASAP. Ang Harrod was back on the market, not just for love, but for a room in a share house. It was like dating. You, you were trying to look your best, but this time was hell was absolute hell. How many places do you think you inquired mm -hmm. about? Got to be close to 100. Like 80% of them went unanswered. Mm. If I took five more minutes to write that message, 50. A hundred, you know. A hundred places that you had to... That's a madness. Imagine having to go out on a hundred dates. You're talking about going out, looking for properties is like being on a dating market. Imagine having to go out on a hundred dates just to get one date, like a, a, a one, one smash. That's long. Let me pull that back a little bit. One sec be close to 100. Like 80% of them went unanswered. If I took five more minutes to write that message, 50 more people would have messaged. So it just wasn't a gamble I could take. Did you ever expect to have this much trouble? I don't think I was expecting the toll it would take to be constantly told no. It's probably the most anxious I've probably ever been. I wasn't sleeping. Uh, I was crying a lot and I don't cry. That's like two days of water. <laughs> There's just too much moisture in the air. She found a place eventually, but there were compromises. That oh my days. Oh my days, that must be the mold that's...
like two days of water. There's just too much moisture in the air. She found a place eventually, but there were compromises. That chair is from the past tenant. And is that mould up there? It's mould, and I think they had a leak, but I largely took it because I had to. Yeah, it was my one and only option. Right now, it's not unusual for renters to feel desperate. I put a call out online asking people what it's currently like to find a home. It is a pretty wild um, time out there right now. Absolutely shocking. It's the worst I've ever seen it. For the millions of people who rent privately in the UK, most will use an online property site to find somewhere to live. I checked for our back name. Hoping that something's been added to the last time you... Zoo plus spare room, those are the go to. I literally, I don't know if you remember in the beginning part of this, the girl said something about bidding wars on that. Literally, they will have about four or five people or just have an open viewing. Come to view the property between 5 and 6 p.m. on Friday or 5 and 6 p.m. on Saturday. And I know 10, 10 people turn up and that. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the landlord's market. Yo, all right. All you don't want the property, we'll start a bidding war in it, yeah? Who's willing to rent this place for 1,200? Yeah, I will, I will, I didn't, 1,300. Yeah, 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 start dropping off on that. Bam, next thing you know, the room is sold for 1,500 per month. Long, fam. Long. I know, listen, you're either going to be a renter or a landlord. I know which one I need to be. Yeah, I know which one I am. Don't want to be no rascal. I've never paid rent. Never pay rent. I said to myself, I said to my mum before, I will never pay rent or whatever. And I know when I was talking before, and you know that when you're talking when you're younger and that people like roll their eyes, oh yeah, whatever. Ah oh, man, it came to fruition, man. I've never, I've never paid rent. I've never paid rent to a landlord. I've contributed, given money to my mum, but I've never paid rent to no landlord. And landlord don't necessarily mean Joe Bloggs that owns 10 properties. Landlord means the council, Enfield, or the housing association. Um, I don't know, Peabody Housing Association or whatever. Really. Never paid rent before. Because obviously, I stayed at my mum's house, made little contributions, not going to lie, but at the same time, like, there's some people who try to rip, man, like, ah, oh, you was only giving your mum 250 a month when you was on 1800 But at the same time, I wasn't out here spending money like a damn jackass. You didn't see no new Mercedes outside my yard. Yeah, my first car cost me 1700 with some old four plate uh, Honda Civic. These times, what, it's all 2013, man's driving a nine-year-old car. I'm still driving a nine-year-old car. Yeah, I've got another Honda Civic, but it's even older than that. It's an old nine plate, boom, it's 2023. Do that maths, it's 14 years old, blood. Yeah, 13 years old, pretty much, yeah? I was living at my mum's yard, taking off 1800 a month. So take home 1800 a month. I was giving my mum about 200, 250 pounds, but I was saving a grand a month. I weren't going on these fancy holidays and that. I weren't buying Balmain, Balenciaga, Gucci, LV, none of that. You wouldn't even have known that man was earning that much money because I'm not a show offy, flashy, flashy person and that. So, yeah, maybe if I had a nice Mercedes outside, maybe if I was going on all these holidays, Eating at all these expensive, stupid ass restaurants, gauchos, and all these dumb places, and that, uh, paying £150 because I'm an idiot meal. Then, yeah, maybe I could have contributed more. But you know what? I went out flossing and that. So, you know what? My mum could eat, my mum didn't even mind. If I wasn't, if I was flashing and flossing all this nonsense, oh, the new iPhone 10s come out, so I have to get it when your phone's perfectly fine and that. Then, yeah. Maybe I should have contributed more, but you know what? I'm not even spending money like that. So my mum was happy to just accept the 200 pounds. And the problem I've got as well, isn't it? I don't like the way these working class parents like to think. There's a lot of working class parents out here who see their child as some sort of like, I don't know, some sort of like extra wage or something. I've got, I've had parents tell, tell me, that they got youths who's my age and that, Tell me, oh yeah, I charge myself five hundred pound all in. Like they're running a business and that. Why are you charging your youth five hundred pound rent? Yeah, they should be contributing in that. But no parent needs to be charging their youth five hundred pound. What you need to charge your five hundred pound for? That means you probably got some financial issues and that. Take care. How can you take five hundred pound from your your youth, man? You should be put, put in a position where they can save money, man. Get refreshed. We would ring the estate agent and it's gone. And even if you do manage to get a viewing, there were 90 people looking. A oh, belt of people, 30 plus people outside. Oh my days.
you're like a fucking <laughs> like you know like them the people line up in the street like where they do the food banks and them things there that's people for viewing you know like when you see when you go to a viewing and you see that much people wanting to view the property you must think to yourself I ain't got no fucking chance. Imagine they're referring it to dating and that. Imagine, yeah, you're going to go and try and uh, get onto a girl and that, and there's that much man waiting to take this girl out on a date. That's wrong. Queuing. My viewing has been cancelled. Let's just say you decide you want to live there. We had to go £250 over. The letting agent asked me to pay the full 12 months up front. Finding. What? Full 12 months up front, you know. So imagine, like, let's say it's uh, in London. Let's say it was a grand. You have to pay 12 grand. Who the fuck's got 12 grand to just back out? I've never heard of that before. Like me, let's say I was going to rent out one of my flats. Let's say I was going to rent it out for £800 a month. So £800 a month times 12, 9,600. Imagine me telling one of the tenants, yeah, give me 10 bags. Give me 10 grand up front. Fuck yeah, no, that would be a madness, bro. Who's got 10 bags to just pull out to pay for 12 months' rent? And these are the same man, yeah, they'll say, yeah, 12 months' rent up front, but then the property is not getting maintained and serviced in between that time. There's mold, there's damp, there's leaky ceilings and shit like that. A scam, blood. I would never do that. Somewhere to rent is an ordeal, made worse by soaring demand. And as the number of available places shrinks, rent is going up across the UK at the fastest rate on record. Almost three and a half million people in England have had their rent raised in the last year alone by an average of 115 pounds a month. And according to one property site, a single renter spends more than a third of their income on rent. Renting is never easy, but something feels different at the moment. Some renters are so stressed by the rental market that they're joining protests outside different estate agents in London and Manchester. Let's go talk to the people with the mattress. I want to find out that, what that's all about. How do people who can't afford their rent anymore sleep? They have to rough sleep. That's why we have cardboard, mattresses, the kind of stuff that people have to sleep on once they can't afford their rent anymore. Are we giving up? No! Are we giving up? No! Of all the reasons protesters gave for why they're angry about renting right now, one stood out in particular. We've had two rent hikes this year. The landlord says um, he's just keeping up with the, with the general rent increases in the area. To stop greedy landlords, as the protesters here see it, and protect people from the cost of living crisis, they're calling for an emergency rent freeze, like the one recently introduced in Scotland. To wake up one morning and put my rent up by two, three hundred pounds a month, I have nothing that I can do about that. That needs to change. What do you say to those who would argue that, you know, this is just the market. When there's more demand, prices go up. Yeah, well, what do you do when there's a market failure? The market has failed. So they're calling for a rent freeze. But that's just one solution to such a myriad of problems that we've been hearing about. So I can't help but think, where does it actually leave renters? I asked Peter Kemp, who's been researching housing policy for decades. Is it just greedy landlords pushing up prices? It's nothing to do with greediness, it's what we live in a... Professor Xavier from the X-Men blood. Private enterprise, capitalist economy. The key underlying problem is a chronic undersupply of new build housing in Britain. We've got rising demand. When Covid hit, Quite a lot of people left the city centres and now rents are rising when they return. And then there's general household growth. The population's growing. So it's like a perfect storm. Many campaigners are calling for a rent freeze. Is that a solution to these problems? A seductive idea, but actually it's misguided. The supply will go down even further. Existing landlords will get out. New landlords won't come in. So you have to find a, a solution that's a bit of a compromise yep. that enables landlords to make a reasonable profit but not an excessive one. The National Landlords Association blamed the supply and demand issues on government tax policy. The government has repeatedly promised to make private renting fairer and says it will introduce a renters reform bill in this parliament, but that could take years. So what does it mean for people who need a home right now? I was not expecting to be in this position at the age of 34. Earlier this year, Jess left her job and her life in Cambridge, ready for a new chapter studying a master's degree in Manchester. It was meant to be an exciting new step. 
She was looking for a place with two of her best friends. We started looking for houses to rent. They were just finding it nigh on impossible. Where did that leave you? Well, it left me here. I'm living at my dad's house in Wolverhampton. Never thought that I'd have to live here again. It was a bit of a um, surprise, wasn't it? Because I, uh, I thought she'd be coming for a bit. And it was meant to be two weeks and that's turned into three months. Yeah. You just feel like... Check back there in a year, she's still there. This is wrong, I shouldn't be here. I'm an adult now. Like a lot of people, Jess has turned to house share websites too, but the whole experience has left her exhausted. A furnished room in a house, £2,617 per month. Where the fuck is that? Is that one of the, the rooms in the Buckingham Palace or something? Like, what the hell? Furnished room in a house, £2,617 per month. That is insane. What about the messages you've sent out? Absolutely no replies at all. No. I mean, that, that, that had to be in London somewhere. Had to be. Somewhere near central London, like Islington or somewhere. It has to be. Some zone one. Zone one or zone two. There's no way that could be in Wolverhampton. A room, you know. Thing. I almost made my peace with the fact that I could never buy a house. But now you can't even move to a new town. That makes me feel so trapped. That's so scary. I just feel like I'm not making the most of life. Renters can keep hoping for government action or that the market cools down. But until then, they'll have to deal with this perfect storm in renting and maybe settle for poor conditions, gruelling house hunts or sticking it out at home with mum and dad. The rich is going to get richer and the poor is going to get poorer. A lot of people hate that, that concept. They hate it. But you know what? I don't really care. And it, I don't care that the rich is going to get richer and I don't care that the poor is going to get poorer because you know what? I don't plan to ever be poor. I will never be poor. As long as I've got a healthy body and a healthy brain, there's no excuse. See, some people, they are like a leaf. They're just blown around by the wind. They don't take control of their life. They don't take control of their situation. They don't make sacrifice and that. So they get scared when things in the outside world get tough and that because they know they're not willing to do nothing about it. When I hear that the poor is going to get poor, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter to me. Because I know I'm going to do the work to be well off. So I'm already in a decent position right now. I ain't well off, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, d I just don't care. I, d I don't care and it, it don't affect me. So, but that's it for today. The housing market, though, is, is nuts still. The renting thing is nuts. Uh, there's people out here paying £600 for a fucking room and that. It's, it's crazy. Stay worse. Done.